Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Larry here with Packmaster Dog Training. Uh, today, I'm going to try to ask, uh, answer a question, not ask a question, answer a question I've gotten from several of you, and it's about um, the rate of reinforcement or the reinforcement schedule when I'm teaching a new dog with the e-collar. Um, for those of you that don't understand what that means is how often am I using a food reward in the teaching process, basically. So let me see if I could break it down for you kind of simple here without making it too long okay uh, I'm not gonna go through how I condition a new dog to the e-collar step by step because I've done that a hundred and fifty thousand times and I'm sure many are bored with it already but as far as the reinforcement schedule how I'm rewarding let's go over it real quick and see if I can make this uh, easier for you guys alright let's go back to our training triangle alright so the training part comes in a, a, a three-tier pyramid, Pick, picture that. So picture a triangle broken down into three parts. At the bottom, you're gonna have part A. This is the conditioning phase. This is where we're teaching a brand new dog to the e-collar, all right? At this part, at this point in the training, the dog has never felt the tool before. We are teaching the dog the whole new language. So in the first part of training, we are rewarding every time, okay? So we are helping the dog and rewarding every single time, all right? So basically we're using the leash, the e-collar, and the verbal command with a food reward every time. How often do we do that? Every time. For how long do we do that? That depends on the dog and the ability of the handler. You want to get in a few hundred good reps at this stage in the beginning. When I say a few hundred, that can mean over three or four days, or that could be over a week or two. But this is the very first part of the training with the e-collar. You want to get a few hundred really good reps in. And again, we're helping the dog every time, e-collar, leash, and food together, okay? Now, the second part, the intermittent phase. I've talked about this before, how this is vital, and this is where a lot of people are failing, okay? This is very, very important. Um, now, in the past, I have said this is where sometimes you're rewarding, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're using the e-collar, sometimes you're not. Well, I recently took a, a workshop with Tobias Alenik from, from uh, Germany, and Tobias was teaching the, the same thing that, that I was. He was teaching it the same way, except he was teaching it a lot better and he broke it down even more. And when he did this, I told him, hey, I really like that, I'm gonna steal it from you, Tobias, and, and I am. So I'm, I'm gonna break it down for you to make it even simpler, okay? So in the inter intermittent phase, there's four combinations that you must succeed at, okay? So the, f the four combinations are as follows. Starting off, after you've done your conditioning phase, during the intermittent phase, what you're gonna do is the four combinations consist of e-collar with reward so help with reward e-collar no reward then you're gonna have no e-collar with reward and you're gonna have no e-collar no reward four different combinations do you understand that e-collar with reward e-collar no reward you're gonna have no e-collar with reward no e-collar no reward those are the four things you're going to practice during this phase okay but you're gonna get away from your home too and you're gonna practice different locations around different distractions this is a very very vital part if you succeed here you're setting your dog up to win this part is so important guys but you have to get to different locations around real distractions and this is where you're still teaching you're still training but you're testing the dog too to see where he's at and again you're gonna need a few hundred repetitions here how long that takes, that's up to you, that's up to dog, up to the dog, you know, but this is vital. And again, that makes it a lot more specific than the way I was teaching it previous. I was very vague in my in my teaching. And um, that's why workshops are so important, guys. If you can get out and do a seminar or workshop with a, with a good trainer, even if you're a very experienced trainer, you're almost always gonna take away something good and, and just that part alone was worth it for me and and I love the way he broke that down and made it more specific that's really helpful to the average dog owner and I'm going to use that okay so that's the intermittent phase that's that's where you stand there then once you're comfortable there and the dog is doing very well then the final stage that the top of the triangle is the maintenance phase this is where you know you're out in public you're probably not going to need an e-collar but it's there just in case 
all right? And um, at this stage, let's say uh, you give the dog, he's, he's, he's 100 feet away from you, and you give the dog the recall command, he doesn't respond. Then within two seconds, you want to give the dog the correction with the e-collar. Now he, he can be corrected. The dog is fully trained and understands it. He just decides, well, I'm not going to do. And you remember, there has to be consequences for doing right. There has to be consequences for doing wrong. So at this stage, the dog's 100 feet away from you. You, you give him the recall. He doesn't respond right away. Within two seconds, you tap the e-collar, the dog comes. You reward. You still reward, okay? You want that reward to follow the correction always. This makes for a very, very foolproof dog. It, it really does, guys. If you're not using this training triangle, you're you're probably hurting yourself. You, you really are. And and let me go back and say this: this doesn't only pertain to the e-collar. You could use this methodology for any tool you're using. But we're talking e-collar because that's what people keep asking me about. And and let's be realistic: if your dog's a hundred feet away. Unless you have an e-collar, there is no correction. That's the great thing about the tool when used properly. All right, so there's still folks out there that jump right into the e-collar and the dog doesn't do and there's a correction. And you know how I feel about that, guys. I, I'm gonna be an advocate for this tool till, till the day I die because I'm still seeing it just used and abused and not enough people are using it correctly. Um, learn to train the dog without it. It's just a tool, it's a supplement. It's going to make training a little better once you get to a certain level without it. But use that trying, uh, the, the training triangle, that pyramid broken down into three sections. So again, the very first section at the bottom is the conditioning phase. You're rewarding every time, few hundred repetitions. The intermittent phase, you have those four combinations, right? E-collar with reward. E-collar, no reward. Um, no e-collar with reward no e-collar, no reward. And you mix that up, you don't go in order. You mix that up and you do it under different distractions in different locations. When you nail that section and the dog is, is responding very well, you're on your way to having an extremely well-behaved, trustworthy dog off leash. You know, and like I said, the whole goal is just to have a well-behaved dog off leash, give that dog all the freedom he wants. So for the folks that asked me for the reward schedule, I hope this is what you were looking for. If it's not, email me, call me, do whatever you gotta do. I'll help in any way I can. I want this tool used correctly. Take advantage of the benefits. Just do it right, please guys, please. Please treat the animals right. Don't use this in, in, in the wrong way because uh, it's ruining a lot of animals, all right? Don't be lazy. Learn how to train a freaking dog. I hope this helps, peace.